In this tutorial, I'll explain how to do two of the problems from the textbook of, in Chapter 4. And Chapter 4 focuses on using the truth tree method to determine various logical properties about propositions, sets of propositions, and arguments. And what we'll look at here are how to use the truth tree method to test for consistency, inconsistency, and then how to tell use the truth tree method to tell whether or not a proposition is a contradiction, tautology, or contingency. So let's take a look at the problem from page 150, number two in the end of chapter exercises. This is section A. So what this problem asks us is whether or not this set of propositions, not P and not Q, and then the proposition not P or Q, is consistent or inconsistent and to use the truth tree method to determine this. We'll start by creating a quick table and put numbers to indicate the propositions. We'll input the propositions stacking them. And now we'll begin the process of decomposing the truth tree to determine whether or not the propositions are consistent or inconsistent. So we'll start with the first proposition, not P and not Q. And so this proposition will stack using, if we apply conjunction decomposition, so that's one conjunction decomposition, and it'll give us not P and not Q. So not P on line three and then not Q at line four. And this is because the proposition not P and not Q are true, just in the case that not P is true and not Q is true. Next, we'll move to the proposition at line two, which is then a negated disjunction. And so decomposing this proposition, we're going to make use of <coughs> negated disjunction decomposition which if you look in your textbook is a also a stacking rule. And so we'll apply negated disjunction decomposition to line two. And what we'll get is <clears throat> this negated P or Q is true just in the case that not P is true and not Q is true. And so what we have here is a display of the conditions under which the, the set of propositions not p and not q line one and not p or q are true and if you take a look moving from the base of the tree all the way upward we don't find a case where there's a proposition and it's a literal negation and so we see that this tree is open and so let's just kind of center everything so it looks a little bit nicer and remove the borders and so if we have a tree where there is not a where there's at least one completed open branch that is since this tree has one op one branch and it's open that is there's not a proposition in, in its literal negation we can say that this set of propositions is consistent. That is, the truth tree method indicates that there, it's consistent. Now, if this tree, for whatever reason, uh, had a proposition in its literal negation, so let's say at line 6 we had Q, you would see at line 6 we have Q, at line 4 we have not Q, in which case this tree would close, there, that is, all the branches, and in this case there's only one, uh, contain a proposition in its literal negation, that is Q and not Q, and then the tree would be inconsistent. But in our case, what we have is uh, a tree that doesn't close, and so we have a consistent tree. Next, let's look at the proposition if P, then Q, and P. And in this case, we're testing to see whether or not it is a contradiction, tautology, or contingency. Depending upon which proposition property you want to test for will depend upon will determine how you want to set up the tree. So there's really only 
two kind of ways to set up the tree. There is a test for tautology, there's a test for cont contradiction, and if both of those tests fail, then you conclude it's a contingency. So if you ever want to use the truth tree method to say that a proposition is a contingency, you'll have to test for both contradiction and tautology. So let's start by testing this proposition for to see if it's a contradiction. Now, this is the simplest test. What we'll do here is simply write the proposition we want to test at line one and begin the process of decomposition. So since this is a conjunction, we'll get apply conjunction decomposition to the first proposition and it'll give us P, then Q at line two, and it'll give us P at line three. And this is by conjunction decomposition on line one. Now, now that we have one proposition that has not been decomposed that can be decomposed at line two, we'll need to go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and split these cells by clicking split cells, and I'm gonna go ahead and s center everything. So looking at line two, we have if P then Q, and applying conditional decomposition, what this gives us is not P on the left-hand branch and Q on the right-hand branch, and this is by conditional decomposition. And the tree is fully decomposed at this point. So what we'll go ahead now and do is um, look, beginning at the base of the tree, looking upward to see if the branch is close. So on the right hand, the left or the left hand branch, we have not P, and we have P at line three, and the right hand branch we have Q, but we don't have any proposition in its literal negation. So we conclude that this branch is open. So if in a test for contradiction, we don't find that all the branches close, then we know that it is not a contradiction. So we can write concerning this tree here, that it is not a contradiction. Given that it's not a contradiction, we cannot conclude from this alone whether or not it's going to be a tautology or contingency. It could be one of the one of these two states, but we just don't know which one. But luckily for us, we have another test. That is, we can test for, use the truth tree test to test to see if the proposition is a tautology. And the way we go about doing this is we have to kind of change the setup a little bit. In this case, what we're going to do is negate the entire proposition. So notice that at line one in the first test for contradiction, we have the, just the proposition we want to test if P then Q and P. Now in the case of the test for tautology, we have the negation of this entire proposition. And this is a negated conjunction. So rather, in the, rather than the first case where the propositions stack and we apply conjunction decomposition, in this case, we're going to need to apply conjunction, negated conjunction decomposition. And so this will be a branching rule. So I'm gonna insert uh, the lines again just so I can kind of see what's going on and so I'm going to split the cells and so notice that we have line one we have a negated conjunction so this will give us not P then Q and we'll also have not P and we will have decomposed line one using negated conjunction decomposition on line one now, there's no need to further decompose the left-hand branch because we already have at least one completed open branch. So now, if we look at the truth tree, what we see is that on the right-hand side, that is the right-hand branch, there's at least one completed open branch. Now, the test for tautology is such that if we decompose the tree with the initial setup for tautology, which is negating the proposition, so if we decompose the tree and all of the branches close, then we know it's a tautology. If, however, there is at least one completed open branch, like we have here, we know that the proposition is not a tautology. Now, since 
the a proposition can only be a contradiction a tautology or contingency and we've concluded that it's not a contradiction and we've also sh shown using the truth tree method that it's not a tautology then what we can conclude about this proposition is that it is a contingency as the truth tree method indicates that this proposition is sometimes true and sometimes false it all depends upon the truth values of P and Q. So this is how you would use the truth tree method to determine whether or not a set of propositions is consistent or inconsistent, and also how to use the truth tree method to determine whether or not a single proposition is a contradiction, tautology, or contingency.